tonight, stemming the tide of abuse against gamers. Smarty Pants Cortana plans world domination. And the oldest dot com turns 30. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 294 for Friday, March 13th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Personal Capital. With Personal Capital, you can see and manage all of your financial accounts in one place and make smarter investments. Best of all, it's free. To sign up, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Welcome back. I'm Megan Maroney. Let's get right to this Friday the 13th show. A few weeks ago, we interviewed Matt Weinberger from Business Insider about online harassment and what some gamers are doing about it. Today, we are thrilled to welcome Zoe Quinn, creator of Depression Quest, to talk about how to stem abuse and threats to gamers and others online. Welcome, Zoe. Hi, thanks for having me. So you run uh, Crash Override, an organization designed to provide crisis center support, victim assistance, community, act community outreach and activism. Tell us about uh, why you started it and what you're doing with it. Sure. Um, Crash Over Ray kind of evolved organically out of uh, finding myself in a situation where I had to deal with massive amounts of online abuse. And in doing our due diligence to monitor the channels that people were sort of planning on doing messed up things to me on uh, to sort of make sure we can head people off at the pass and uh, keep ourselves safe, we started to see it spread to other people and started to see other people being targeted. So we started reaching out to them and just being like, hey, just so you know, people are looking to maybe mess your stuff up. You might want to, you know, this is, these are the ways that they got to me. So you might want to beat them off the pass. And it just kind of kept sort of expanding like that until it just seemed net, like a good idea to sort of formalize those arra arrangements with other people that had sort of been through this sort of thing and had real practical advice instead of, you know, trying to go to an, an anti-cyberbullying charity and maybe get a brochure. We wanted to be doing more than that. We wanted to be being like, oh, we've actually been here. Uh, this is what you need to do. This is what will work. And, you know, there's someone you can talk to that understands that has been there and that won't tell you to just get offline or act like the internet's not a big deal. Right. I mean, there does seem to be a gender gap. I mean, this kind of abuse uh, is, it's a pr relatively new, I mean, in this way. So you're, you're right. It would be difficult to go just to speak to someone who isn't, doesn't really spend a lot of time, doesn't understand how Twitter works. That would be really not as good as talking to someone who's been there. So we should, a lot of Gamergate revolved around free speech. And there's a question of what's free speech and what's violence. I mean, even in our operation, we get, I, you know, I get people tweeting things, you're old, your eyebrows are weird, that kind of stuff. It's just <laughs> basically mean. It's not violent. I mean, wh where do you draw the line when you can prosecute someone? Well, it kind of, it sort of depends on like the specifics of every case, like everybody's situation is different, but I think there's a sort of free speech concept that is different from the constitutional definition, which is that the government can't silence you, but people sort of, when they use free speech, I think mean like the ideal of it. But the problem is in sort of determining that this abusive behavior is free speech, you're then sort of try, uh, trumping the ability for people who run services for private businesses who like Twitter and other tech companies who can come up with their own t terms of service use and enforce them how they please. Mm -hmm. That sort of infringes on their free speech to say, you must allow abuse on your platform. Beyond that, the sort of harassment, like, like, the really aggressive stuff that includes like doxing and uh, dead naming people and and that sort of thing actually sort of inhibits other people's free speech by driving them off these platforms. So when you have major news organizations learning about stories and progress from places like Twitter and Wikipedia basically writing human history, if you have a bunch of marginalized voices missing from that conversation, then that affects culture as large. At, like at large, it's bigger than just a tech issue. It's going forward, we need to make sure that people aren't being driven off these services because it's going to make a very narrow uh, type of voice heard in history going forward. Right. So you brought up Twitter. Um, yesterday, they took a stance against revenge porn. They changed the official Twitter rules to say you may not post intimate photos or videos that were taken or distributed without the subject's consent. Now, from what I read about this, this means this, this will be a response to people complaining about it. They're not, Twitter's not going to go out and try to find revenge porn. Do you think Twitter's doing enough right now? 
See, it's hard to say because they have a lot of terms of service that uh, aren't enforced quite strongly enough. Um, I'm actually also, aside from Crash Override, on a board of a new nonprofit called Online Abuse Prevention Act, uh, sorry, Online Abuse Prevention Initiative, which is uh, founded by Randy Harper, the creator of the Good Game Autoblocker, which is a tool on Twitter that makes it a lot more livable for people who are being targeted these last few months. And what we're doing is trying to work with companies like Twitter to sort of come up with technical solutions to social issues. So. While they're not quite doing, I'd say, enough enough because like there's plenty of rules on Twitter that just are not strictly enforced. There's people who have built careers on harassing people that are bragging about their like number of suspensions and in and, and their profiles and such. I'm hoping that with programs like OAPI and with people more than ever now starting to think about this problem and starting to talk about solutions to it, that we'll start to see real progress. And I think that, re that cracking down on things like revenge porn is a step in the right direction. So at the, at the Game Developers Conference, you spoke, you talked a little bit about the zero tolerance policy. Uh, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is that people who people who have built basically their brand on harassing people and, and sort of spewing hatred to a very vitriolic group of followers that they've assembled. Uh, you see people like this on YouTube that have like their entire shtick is encouraging harassment they'll get banned, they'll get like suspended on services like a slap on the wrist after doing the most egregious things. And when you're on like the 13th report where you're like, yeah, this person sent me, like this person's posting child porn and you're in the position where you're hoping something has been done about it, that shouldn't have, that should have been cracked down on like 20 reports ago. It's, it's a little bit ridiculous how people who are serial harassers who are all they produce, their entire brand is harassing people, are allowed to function on these services. And I think that services need to do more to actually crack down on these people who that's literally all that they contribute. Right. So where does the responsibility lie more in the services or in law enforcement? I know Mother Jones had an article about that, that said the Department of Justice has prosecuted 10 people for cyber stalking between 2010 and, and 2013, which it, that was shocking to me that there weren't more people prosecuted. Uh, what do you think? I mean, whose responsibility is it the most? Well, it's difficult because it's like a really terrible hydra with a bunch of different awful heads. <laughs> so, you know, we've got dealing with helping victims on the front lines with, with crash override. OAPI is working with services to sort of, you know, help address it at the back end level. Um, but we also do need um, culture at large to change, not just to start taking the internet and tech as a serious and important part of a lot of people's lives, especially as more and more people live and work online, but to help enact laws that will accurately cover the stuff. Because right now there's, it's just like, it takes so long for new laws to be formed, for case law to be made. It's the, the speed at which the, that traditional systems like law enforcement and, and uh, Congress move is a lot slower than the, the speed at which tech moves where we're constantly iterating and we're constantly coming out with new things. So I think that bridge needs to be uh, sort of built a bit better and that, that gap needs to be closed a little bit better going forward. Right. Well, yesterday, Catherine Clark, Representative Kathleen Clark, she gave a speech to Congress about how to combat internet harassment. Uh, Brianna Wu, who's also involved in Gamergate, she the reason Catherine Clark got involved in this was Brianna Wu is in her district. Um, does this sort of thing give you hope, speeches in Congress? I think it's a good start. Um, we're actually in touch with the Congresswoman's office as well. Um, I'm hoping that seeing this sort of thing start to be discussed in mainstream settings outside of the bubble of tech and these services that that's a good that's a good start not just for the internet starting to be taken seriously as a place that matters and a place that that people have to start considering part of everybody's lives but to see it sort of starting to be taken seriously and starting to be you know actually addressed by people outside of those on the front lines who have to deal with it every day right so if someone is right now watching this they're a victim of this kind of abuse what what kind of advice can you give them right now <laughs> I would highly recommend that they first and foremost make sure that their accounts are secure, uh, that they have two-factor authentication enabled on services. We have a big guide on Crash Override and network.com on how to secure your information like that and really just start locking down everything because a lot of hacking attempts will accompany uh, the sort of harassment. It's also good to make sure that if you run a website that you have uh, DDoS protection, uh, you can get free, uh, free help with that with Cloudflare. Um, you can also do things like purchase a YubiKey, which will help you 
um, sort of add another layer of encryption, I would recommend not using app specific passwords because that bypasses any sort of multi factor authentication you have enabled. Um, outside of that, I would just encourage everybody to just really spend a night and Google the ever living heck out of yourself. See what uh, is actually out there about you, what you've put online over the course of your existence, and you know maybe delete old accounts that you don't want getting down. And like you might have something small and unprotected that you might have ignored. Like for instance, my Dominoes.com account that I think I made once and never used. Uh, ended up getting hacked during the course of this because I had just completely forgotten it existed and it had a weak password. So try and make sure you are in control of what information is out there about you, that you're practicing good account security and that you don't feel like this is your fault because online abuse is a massive issue and it's really easy to sort of, you know, beat yourself up for this, to think that it was somehow your fault, but it's, it's an ongoing issue and it's a bigger problem than any one of us. Well, thank you so much, Zoe. That's great advice for online abuse or any kind of abuse. Uh, I love Depression Quest. It's an awesome game. Uh, I, I love what you're doing. I hope you keep working on creating more games also. Uh, and you mentioned to me before Randy Harper, who you talked about, who started the Online Abuse Prevention Institute. Is that, did I get that right? Initiative. Initiative. Uh, she'll be on Floss Weekly. is tricky. <laughs> yeah, so she'll, she'll be on uh, Floss Weekly on April 8th. So if you guys want to follow up with her, you can too. And uh, where can people see what you're working on, Zoe? Uh, I'm on Twitter as The Quinspiracy. And I've got a website up with a lot of my work at quinspiracy.com. Excellent. And we will also put a link to Crash Override and all those resources. I know you said you're working on even more, having them reviewed by experts. And we look forward to seeing that. Thank you so much, Zoe. Thank you so much. And coming up... Yeah. Google leaks who is information and a group of dads takes on Amazon moms. But first, as a smart investor, you should have a diversified portfolio. But like so many investors, you may have accounts scattered everywhere. Personal Capital lets you track all of your investments on one screen. Plus, their award-winning software works on your desktop, your smartphone, and your tablet. Personal Capital helps you make smarter financial decisions. Get a free investment checkup with a customized financial plan. Then take the next step with Personal Capital's wealth management services. This type of advice was once only available to the super rich. But now, thanks to Personal Capital, you can get one-on-one -on -one access to your own personal financial advisor starting with a free 30-minute consultation. But I know you, you want more, right? Head over to Personal Capital's blog. It's loaded with great advice on everything from investment trends, fraud prevention, to planning better for your vacations. And it's written in approachable, down-to-earth style, not full of investment speak. It puts the power in your hands. It's your money, keep more of it. Signing up only takes a minute, it's free, and you'll see the benefits immediately. To get your free account, go to personalcapital.com slash TN2. Personal Capital is free, and it's the smart way to grow your money. We thank Personal Capital for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. This morning we told you that Microsoft's digital assistant Cortana is getting smarter. And soon she'll make the cross-platform leap to iPhones, iPads, and Android phones and tablets. That's right. According to Reuters exclusive, a smarter Cortana will be available as a standalone app for iOS or Android. She'll be able to read and understand email, find and display particular files, and anticipate, anticipate your needs. In other words, she's no clippy. In other Microsoft news, GeekWire cites an internal Microsoft memo today revealing that MSN will be moving to the Windows division. The future of the once popular MSN service is unknown. And here's another update to a story we reported this morning. Google has accidentally leaked the personal information of more than 280,000 Google Apps for Work customers. The glitch was identified by security researchers at Cisco, and apparently it's been around since 2013. The leak affects only those using the registrar Enom with their Google Apps sites. And Twitter has finally confirmed their acquisition of Periscope, a meerkat clone that lets you stream video from your iPhone to your Twitter feed. TechCrunch reports that Periscope will allow both public and private video live, live streaming. And unlike Meerkat, the standalone app will not include the Snapchat-like feature that makes streams disappear after they're live. So you can watch them again and again and again. Happy 30th birthday.com. According to VeriSign, the oldest .com, Symbolics.com, was registered 30 years ago this Sunday on March 15th, 1985. And in January, we told you that YouTube had promised 360 degree video on their site. Today, the company delivered. YouTube announced that they will now allow you to create, upload, and watch 360 degree videos 
on their service. And here is the segment that I like to call Change Starts With You. This is when I find a change.org petition that aims to change the internet and maybe even the world. Stay-at-home dad Jeffrey Harrington from Topeka, Kansas started a petition to change the name of the Amazon's Moms program to Amazon Family. Dads are allowed to become part of the Amazon Mom program, which currently offers 20% off diaper subscriptions and exclusive deals and discounts. But it would be nice if they could be acknowledged in the, in the name. Why not call it Amazon Family? Go to change.org to sign that petition. And speaking of dads taking on more responsibility, Mashable reported this week that dads everywhere are taking to Twitter to post pictures of themselves changing their baby's diapers. You can find them by searching the hashtag Smelfy. And that's it for this Friday edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Write to us at TN2 at twit.tv or write to me directly at Megan at twit.tv. Let me know if you'd rather not see pictures of dad smelling diapers. You can catch our live stream weekday, every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Drop in a few minutes early and you can see some of the behind the scenes action. It's like Meerkat, except way better. Don't miss our morning news program, Tech News, today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thank you for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.